today's show, we get your kids moving, plan your next vacation, and keep your car running smoothly. You invest in maintenance and you pay for repair. Plus, I ask go kick their butts. Butts on three. Works for me. One, two, three. Butts. See which shows are on the Emmy hot list. But first, how to make the latest trendy food from TikTok. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Christina Guerrero. And I'm Jimmy Rhodes, and we hear a lot about the negative aspects of social media, but at its best, it can open our worlds to things we'd otherwise never hear about. That's right, and that includes food, with chefs from around the world sharing some truly imaginative recipes with a surprisingly simple mixture of ingredients. Teresa Strasser's looking at the food trends blowing up TikTok, and that's our featured story at the top of the list. Bake, broil, boil, or brown. If you want some trendy, tasty treats, look no further than TikTok. Why do you think certain food trends emerge? There's this massive curiosity out there. You have this demographic that's like 18 to 24 years old, and they're discovering things. Chef John Paul Hutchins, corporate chef for Shift Pixie Lab, chops it up big with three trending dishes and serves up a little history along the way. Feast your eyes on elote ribs. Elote has been a trend for a while. It has been. Elote is street corn. Normally you get it on a stick, they brush it with mayonnaise, that mayonnaise can be flavored with something, and then they hit it with cheese and different garnishes and stuff, and you just happily munch on it. Mm -hmm. What we're gonna do is cut these things so they almost look like spare ribs when they cook. Zap the corn cob for a couple of minutes. It softens it just enough that I have a little more control when I cut it. I'm gonna have you build our mayonnaise mixture. First, grab a couple limes and throw them in the microwave. Yep, I said that right. The reason why the limes look so funky is I microwave these for about a minute. That blows up the inside of the lime so I get 100% of the juice out of it. I love a funky lime. I did not think I was gonna say that today. Throw the mayo in the juice, then add a bunch of your favorite herbs like cilantro and scallions, and tahini chili powder, and coat the corn. We're gonna throw this in the air fryer. It's gonna take about 30 minutes. We'll come back, okay. throw more junk on top of it, and eat them like little vegetarian ribs. Brush more of the mixture onto the elote ribs, then sprinkle cotilla cheese all over them. And go to town. Well, it's just about perfect. That's pretty good, isn't it? It's cute, and it's it is. It's TikTokable. Next, make anything better with a lemon scallion compound butter. The beauty of a compound butter is that I can make a flavorful butter and I can add it to things or I can turn it into sauces, but I have total control over the fat. Could you do kind of what's left in your fridge at the end of the week? So let's suppose you had truffle oil. You could mix that into this butter, maybe with some chives, uh -huh. and then drop that on a steak or drop it on a piece of lobster. So cool. you make this to have in the future? Yes. Put a stick of butter in a bowl, mix in the juice from two lemons and some chopped scallions. Place the butter on parchment paper and form a roll. And just take this guy, roll him up, twist the two ends, and then just throw that in your freezer. How long does this keep in your freezer? Six months. Wrap things up with a pineapple jalapeno coleslaw. We actually did this recipe at Ship Pixie Labs and it just exploded. All of a sudden we had millions really? of views on this thing. It almost seems like the majority of Americans have been buying this at the deli counter or buying it pre-made yes. at their big box store. Yes. And all of a sudden they saw somebody like me make it and they're like, that's it? Throw white wine, vinegar, and sugar in a bowl with some mayonnaise, pineapple, and whip it up. Chop up the cabbage, onion, bell pepper, and jalapeno. Toss everything together thoroughly. I can't believe how good this is. Well, remember, it's not swimming in mayonnaise. Essentially, we made a creamy vinaigrette. Right. If you think of it that way. For the full recipes, head to thelisttv.com. TikTok taking your taste buds on a wild ride at the top of our list. All right, are you one of those people that gets motivated to move by counting your steps? Well, that competitive spirit can help kids get motivated too. We have some kid-friendly trackers all under $100 to get them on the move. Kids have about a million reasons they'd rather be sitting down than outside burning energy. But with kid-friendly fitness trackers, they'll be inspired to be more active. We are looking at three popular models. 
starting with the Vivo Fit Junior 3 from Garmin. This fitness tracker features a battery that lasts up to a year, and Garmin senior product manager John Watkins says it's designed to be kid tough. So they don't really have to worry about taking it off when they get in the pool. There's great features like preset timers. There's all kinds of things that my girls like to time as they're doing things throughout the day. There's a free companion app for parents to monitor step count and other physical activity. There are plenty of popular character theme models to choose from. We have Disney Princess, we have Marvel superheroes, and then also Star Wars The Mandalorian are, are some of the newer designs. You can find it online and in big box stores for about $90. Sometimes a little nudge is all it takes to go from downtime to get up and go time. Next up is the Fitbit Ace 3. When kids crush their goals, Ace buzzes with fireworks. It has all the usual fitness stuff like heart rate and step count, but can also remind your child when it's time for bed and track their sleep quality. You can be, you can be it's waterproof and the free app features parental controls and all of your mini me stats. The battery is rechargeable and lasts for up to eight days. Find it online for about $60. The wait is over. Your adventure begins. We'll wrap it up with a vital hero from Bandai. It is a wearable gaming device, and the secondary component of it is, is that you can't play the game without being active. Bandai senior brand manager Sila Estrada says it's based on the wildly popular Digimon series of video games and toys. The more your child moves, the more it will help them in battle. Harness your power. Imagine playing your favorite video game, but the only way you can move forward is if you had to do some crunches. It still includes the usual fitness metrics like step count, heart rate, and more. You need to be wearing the device to hatch your Digimon and track your vitals. Find it on Amazon and the big box stores for 65 bucks. Putting some pep in little one step with kids fitness trackers. Okay, we've all been guilty of it at one time or another and learn the lesson that procrastination can be painful. We know something has to get done, but the longer we wait, the harder it gets to do it. Well, we did the math, and while it adds stress to our lives, procrastination actually has a price tag too. You've probably heard that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, but what's that really mean? We're crunching some numbers to come up with a procrastination price tag. How much more you'll pay if you delay small repairs or regular maintenance. Let's start with your car. It's generally better to address things early than late. James Garnett is the president of NARPRO, Neighborhood Auto Repair Professionals. You invest in maintenance and you pay for repair. Online used tire marketplace U-Tires surveyed American drivers to find the 10 most ignored car problems. Cracked windshields top the list at 42.4%. Small chips and cracks can often be repaired for between 60 and 100 $25. If you wait, windshield replacement can set you back between $250 to $450. U-Tires puts the procrastination price tag at an average of $257.50. A way bigger delay differential? One of the lowest cost, most needed things on any vehicle is the engine oil and filter. U-Tires puts the average cost of an oil change between $35 and $120. And if that unlubricated engine seizes up? I've seen some as expensive as $8,000 to replace the engine. U-Tires pegs the procrastination price tag at $3,172.50. Yeah, cars are expensive, and so is your home. American Family Insurance's home maintenance checklist ranges from simple stuff like checking your HVAC filters, good ones start at about 25 bucks, to cleaning your gutters once a year, which they put at $150 to hire out, or you might even do yourself. In contrast, HVAC replacement costs between three and $6,000, and new gutters run between $1,000 and $2,500. Now, even when they're well-maintained, those things won't last forever, but extending their life gives you more time to save for their eventual replacement, which is why every financial expert ever says to have an emergency savings fund for unexpected events. Finally, the biggest procrastination price tag of all is for your health. Early detection really is key. So Dr. Bindi Gandhi, medical director at Revive Atlanta MD, says your annual physical is a must. Doctors are checking to make sure your cholesterol is where it should be. You're not pre-diabetic. Your blood pressure is stable and in control. And we can do that from a physical exam and getting basic blood work. 
forward. Other routine health maintenance? Get your yearly mammograms when you turn 40. Colonoscopies are important, so you now can get a colonoscopy at the age of 45. The other thing I highly also recommend is females, get your pop exam. Now check your plan, but for most insurers, this kind of preventive care is free, but... The minute you're complaining of blood in your stool, that free colonoscopy now becomes diagnostic. The minute you start complaining of a lump in your breast, that changes it to diagnostic. So as long as it's preventative, it is free and it should be covered by insurance. Add in the whole death thing and healthcare has the biggest procrastination penalty of all. Hands down, early detection can save lives. We're learning how to avoid the procrastination price tag. Still to come on the list, how to save money on your next vacation. Right now is the ideal time to stretch your vacation dollar. Plus, a whole new way to give compliments. And I don't think it's the most romantic hotel in Hawaii, do you? Preview this year's Emmy Awards. You're the number one trending topic ahead of tater tots. All that and more next. YouTube, I know it's so rude of me to interrupt right in the middle of watching, but I wanted to remind you to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss one minute of the list. All right, back to the show. We are back. All right, with the prices of gas, rental cars, and flights skyrocketing, you know, a lot of people are thinking that that getaway is right out of reach. Well, Teresa Strasser may have a way for you to take that dream vacation on a budget by cruising. If you think your dream vacation is out of reach, think again. Right now is the ideal time to stretch your vacation dollar with a cruise. Emily Kaufman, a.k.a. The Travel Mom, is talking to us from aboard the new Disney Wish Cruise and telling us why you should consider cruises instead of a one-stop destination, starting with the value. You only have to pack and unpack one time and you're magically transported to different destinations each day. Then you only have to worry about getting yourself to the ship because once you arrive, everything is taken care of. Your accommodations, your meals, your activities, your kids club. Planning out your meals can also be a stressful process while on a regular vacation, but not on a cruise ship. Breakfast for my family, we start talking about lunch and at lunch we plan for dinner. And when you're on a cruise, vacation all of that is taken away and it's very easy to plan next leave the stress of planning activities to the professionals cruise ships are filled with activities that cater to every specific age group there's structured programmings on board most cruise lines for children, teens, and lots of adult activities to do with adults-only pools, adults-only dining options. So they're really catering and creating the opportunity for every person sailing to have fun. Whether it's fun games, kids programming, themed parties, or adult-only activities, you're sure to find something the entire family will enjoy. And lastly, you have the opportunity to experience more on a cruise ship. When you're talking Talking about activities on board, you're participating in fun games, fun kids programming, fun discos and nights out like that. When it comes to experiences, the shore excursions will take you all over the different ports. And you can trust that these have been curated and you're going with reputable companies and it's a way to immerse yourself in each port of call. With each port you land in, you're able to experience the culture and have fun with different excursions on land. Going out on a banana boat, snorkeling, or simply Simply taking a tram to the adults only beach and having some R&R. &R. Cruising right now is the fantastic value. We have missed two years of traveling together and people are going all in. This is a wonderful way to reconnect with your family, reconnect with your loved ones. We are skipping the hassle and taking a cruise. Time for your weekly dose of inspiration with stories of people doing good. They'll remind you that kindness wins. At number one, a TikTok creator from Indiana who's won over millions for what he calls polite catcalling. You look like you returned your shopping cart. Benedict Polizzi posts mainly comedy on his account, but in this video series, he takes to the streets, megaphone in hand, to give out some unexpected and really clever compliments. You look like you'd share your McNuggets. <laughs> These hilarious zingers have earned him about two million followers. You look like you keep your middle console organized. <laughs> <laughs> 
because the world absolutely needs more of these positive vibes. At number two, a 10-year-old on a mission to bring the joy of Lego sets to children's hospitals. It's nice knowing that they're happy. Yeah, I hope all the kids enjoy the Lego sets. Julian Opheim enlisted the help of his parents to create his Legos for Kids charity, which raises money for Lego sets that will be donated to patients. He's always been like that. He's a sweet boy. He's an amazing big brother. He just, he exudes love. Uh, and that's just who he is. His latest donation was worth nearly $2,000 and it went to Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in Florida. So amazing. And finally, a Las Vegas educator going above and beyond to make sure students in need have everything they need to succeed in the classroom. Some snacks, some things like applesauce, granola bars. I have um, a tooth, uh, toothbrushes, toothpaste. Kristen Nigro teaches at Steve Shore Elementary School and three years ago, she opened up the Giving Closet, a place stocked with snacks and essentials where kids can grab anything they might need for themselves or for their family. In the past, I found a need for this closet. I do imagine that we're gonna be serving a lot of families this year. Items in the closet are donated by the community and other parents at the school. It could make or break students coming to school. Uh, we have a lot of children who don't come to school because they don't have clean clothing to wear. And if you'd like to support this cause, you can do so through their Giving Through the Giving Closet GoFundMe page love this idea. And those are three stories that prove that kindness really does win. We'll be right back. Welcome back. On today's watch list, if you love TV, your night for champagne and fist bumps is on the way because the primetime Emmys are Monday night. And Hattie DeJamal is looking at a few of the shows that have racked up record-breaking nominations. I finally arrived. Kenan Thompson will man the mic at the 74th Primetime Emmys. We're going to find out which of the top shows are going to take home the top prizes. Rotten Tomatoes editor Jacqueline Coley highlights the shows that got the most nominations. Leading the list with 25, Succession. You're the number one trending topic ahead of Tater Tots and the Pope followed you. Uh -oh. wow. Pretty much everyone who was involved with Succession was nominated this year, and it really does show just the depth of love that folks have for this show. I hate to say this because I love you, but you're kind of evil. Each character has a little evil in them, which has resonated with fans and critics alike for three seasons. As far as which nominations I think that the show could win, obviously top drama is up there. Jeremy Strong could look to get his Emmy nomination. But don't forget about people like Nicholas Braun, who had an incredible season last year and has been somewhat of a favorite among fans for his, I would say, hilarious interactions with Matthew McFadden. Succession airs on HBO and HBO Max. The Ted Lasso welcome wagon has arrived. Yay! Next up, Ted Lasso, which tied for second with 20 nominations, including Best Comedy. And although season one was an instant phenomenon with rapturous praise, and season two has not necessarily topped that feat, there was still a lot to love about this season, most particularly the interesting storyline that is set up for the Best Actor race with Jason Sudeikis, who is nominated alongside his former SNL co-star, Bill Hader. Ted Lasso is on Apple TV+. Finally, White Lotus, also topped out at 20 nominations. AB, he likes you. Yeah, he likes the first layer. Maybe, I don't know, you know, but what about the second layer and the third layer? Layer after layer, this show follows a group of people as they vacation at a Hawaiian luxury resort. Welcome to the White Lotus. Workplace comedy in so many ways also serves as a very compelling thriller as at the center of the story is a murder mystery that you don't really figure out until the last frames of episode eight. And eight of the show's actors are nominated. Rachel, you were such a beautiful bride, but also very pale. But now you have a little more color and it looks great. Thanks. Catch it on HBO and HBO Max. Tune in Monday for all the Emmy winners on NBC or stream it on Peacock on the watch list. Okay, I'm a little behind as I'm one for three on that list. I watched White Lotus, really loved it. The other show I've been loving, Bluey, didn't make the cut. Weird. Well, I guess I'm really missing out because I haven't watched a single frame of any of those shows. But KG, not having must-see TV in your life frees up a ton of time. I'm trading lasso for laundry. That's why you lasso while you laundry, Ooh, Jimmy. Multitasking. Right. All right, coming up. Have you had 
work done? Ooh, if the answer is yes, are you bragging about it? We're breaking down the latest trend in plastic surgery. That's what's last on our list, and that's next. Welcome back, and it's time for what's last on our list. And KG, apparently there is a new trend in plastic surgery. Ooh, Botox, fillers, maybe a new kind of lipo? Nope. According to a recent article at InStyle.com, the new trend is bragging about it. Oh, yes. So last year, Instagram influencer Mark Jacobs got over like 50,000 likes on his post of him the day of his facelift surgery. And this is a huge change, because back in the day, other than some comedians like, you know, Joan Rivers, Kathy Griffith, who played it for gags, even celebs who obviously had work done would deny it because it was like admitting to cheating or something. Yeah, but now you got stars like Kaylee Cuoco, Cardi B, Janet Kramer. They are all very public about their choices. And even regular folks are sharing their procedures on their socials. Well, it's because authenticity is everything on social media. So really, you can gain some real traction by being radically transparent, mm -hmm. Jimmy. I'm teeing you up here. So what work have you had done? Actually, I've had nothing done so far, but you know, maybe I should. Actually, maybe you should just start by getting your work done. Mm. I'm kid because I love. Oh, I, I would be raising my eyebrows in shock, except the Botox has deadened everything. <laughs> up there. Friends, thanks so much for watching. We'll see YouTube, you. you may have heard that there are robots and algorithms that have figured out everything about you just from your online viewing habits. and. Hey, maybe that has you concerned, but here's the thing. The fact that you just watch an episode of The List all the way through means the robots now think you're super smart. That's what we do for people. We help them impress robots. And if you really want to blow the algorithms away, just go ahead and like this video, leave us a comment, and hit subscribe. You'll never miss a list, and the bots will love you. Want to really blow their gaskets? Click over here and watch another episode of The List. Go on. Drive the robots wild.